Diamonds have always been a symbol of wealth, power, and romance. But maybe not all diamonds should end up on engagement rings. It's amazing, I mean, looking at an ordinary stone like this, you know, and you, people shed blood over it. I mean, you just don't want to touch it. In the country I come from, Sierra Leone, West Africa, it was the trade in illicit diamonds that funded a bloody and vicious civil war, leaving tens of thousands dead and the country on its knees. I am a journalist and I filmed this war. For me, it's deeply personal. My eldest brother, you know, I lost my eldest brother because of this war, because of diamonds in Sierra Leone. It's a disgrace. The pictures I filmed still haunt me. Any diamonds that come from an area controlled by forces opposed to legitimate governments and used to fund military action are conflict diamonds. These stones have paid for wars elsewhere too. In Angola, the Congo, and right now in the Côte d'Ivoire. But since 2003, more than 70 countries have signed up to the Kimberley process, designed to stop these diamonds entering the stores of the Western world. The official line is that the Kimberley process is working and virtually ended the trade in conflict diamonds. But I've come back to Africa and Sierra Leone to find out if they are right and if diamonds will ever again fund war and revolution. Here in the capital, Freetown, these building houses the offices of the Kimberley process. Good morning, Mr. Choker. Good morning, Mr. Samuel. Thank you very much for your time. They verify the legitimacy of Sierra Leone's diamonds. Every diamond that leaves this country officially, it has to pass through this office and has to be certified with the Kimberley process certificate. Can we see how the process works? Yes, I can introduce you to Mr. Hamzi, he's a good morning, sir. Diamond exporter. So you got some stones cheap today. Mm -hmm. Good, good. All these diamonds now are mined from areas in this country that are no longer that no longer have any conflict. When we get the total value of the whole parcel, then we extract the export duty because that's really the purpose we are here for to extract export duty for the government for all diamonds exported out of this country. Before Mr. Hamzi's diamonds can be exported to Israel, the team here must agree on a value. To be certified, the diamonds are weighed and classified by what is known as the four C's. Clarity, carat, coat, and color. This is a fifth color spec shape stone. And it cost $1,480 a carat. Would you pay $9,000 for that? You wouldn't? Well, it's worth it. Ages. If you take all the diamonds that have been found so far and all the earth moving that has been done so far, you need to move five tons of earth to get one carat diamond. <laughs> These are diamonds? Yeah. Okay. Where did you buy these diamonds from? In Freetown. Dealers, the miners, they come down Freetown to sell because most of the export businesses are in Freetown. Before being issued with a certificate, the diamonds are sealed in a tamper proof package. I mean, looking at this entire process, it kind of gives you hope, you know, there's no way anyone can interfere with this, and it, it all looks thorough. A certificate is then issued which confirms the total value of the diamonds and is supposed to prove to buyers overseas that these are not conflict diamonds. But the certificate covers the package, not the individual diamonds. 
So when you buy your diamond engagement ring at the moment, there is no way of knowing exactly where it comes from. A system of warranties and licenses track the diamond from the mine to the Kimberley office. But do all of Sierra Leone's diamonds leave the country by this route? To find out, I'm leaving Freetown and heading for the diamond-rich province of Kono. During the Civil War, this area was devastated. Funded by illicit diamonds, the rebel group, the Revolutionary United Front, or RUF, used Kono as a base. Their aim was to control the country at any cost. Murder, rape, and mutilations were commonplace. The RUF controlled the mines and traded diamonds for guns and ammunition. It's widely believed their main customer was Charles Taylor, the president of neighboring Liberia. With Taylor's help, these conflict diamonds were easily smuggled out of the country and into the stores of the Western world. Charles Taylor has gone on trial for crimes against humanity at a UN special court in the Netherlands. The war has ended and Kono has had a chance to recover. Just five years ago, there was no money coming from diamond exports. But today, there are five major industrial mines whose diamonds enter the Kimberley process, providing much needed income for the people of Sierra Leone. In 2005, diamond exports reached $142 million. Along with these industrial mines, there are also informal mining areas where hundreds of illegal miners turn up, hoping to strike it lucky. It was these informal miners who were forced to work at gunpoint by the RUF. I met Tamba and Sasko, two ex-child soldiers from the RUF Small Boys Unit. They took me back to the rebel mine they guarded. How much are you doing? I'm 14 years old. 14 years old. I'm 10 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 years old. So from then on, then they freed. So they were in Kinde Power, so they cooked no more fire me do them. I said, so anybody who thinks they had to kill them. So then they freed. I said, don't we want to was if you anybody, I see they buy fine chop, eat, they buy fine dress, eat, yes. I said, I go kill you. But then then they, because diamond, I know the only thing they give you ammunition quick. They will get big diamond. I sure see that diamond, I need to take care go to any man that will get a weapon for sale. So now diamond I need to take it, buy weapon and buy ammunition, cow trap for and destroy. While I was talking to Sasko, Tamba is completely overcome with memories. I can one minute, no go, I can wait. <laughs> no, no, the only thing you will talk, which you remember. And you tell me, okay, I've been okay. People, the big one, I've been a bit. When I'm a big one, when I'm born myself, I've been a bit far behind. That man, no man, the man be able to take something, he put it in his pocket. I saw a sign for him. I asked him what he take, he no bring for answer. So that time they are facing a big time, we don't take. I see them come cow, you know, and cow, and they go for fire, safari, and they don't take over. Let me come up. 
but I forsake a diamond. How you kill a man before? Yeah. If rebel, if the war starts back, what do you think say you go do? Me at the room, if you wait not if I run at the king itself. Because I know how it will happen, then they are happy again. Because we could like this too. The horrific effects of a civil war funded by diamonds are still devastatingly real for those who experienced it firsthand. Even though the conflict has ended, I want to find out if the trade in illicit diamonds continues. What I want to do now is to talk to an official dealer, you know, and hear his own views. You know, I want to find Bongo Man, who is one of those dealers who've been around before, during, and after the war. He knows it all. I want to find out from him whether the Kimberley process is effective. For there to be no conflict diamonds, there must be no smuggling at all. Good day, you, Governor. Brother? I am good, sir. You're and welcome, you? boss. Everything is fine, and you? Ah. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Yeah. <laughs> how big or how serious this smuggling business be um, at this country as far as diamond concerned? How... I doubt if any smuggling could be. Because the government so make the business legal to we all that even if you get your diamond, you're not afraid for selling any dealer. As an official diamond dealer, what in the Kimberley process mean to you and how it they operate now? Yes, for Sierra Leone, I think part of the government and we, the dealers, the exporters, all support this routine where you tell me about. Because for Sierra Leone, actually, out of 100%, 99.9 plus, they with the system. Bongo Man has been a diamond dealer for many years and runs a business regulated and checked by the government. But becoming a legitimate diamond miner in a country reported to be one of the most corrupt in the world is beyond most people. In a place where the average monthly wages are $20, you have to pay twice for everything. For anyone to start mining here, you have to have your license. But for most of these miners, getting their license is quite an interesting situation. This bowl will represent represent official payments and this bowl will represent the small team it means bribery i mean we have to bribe in order for them to get it helping me to show you the bribery process is komba kaijama who works for the campaign for just mining in kono he is lending me the two million leons i need three miners who have already been through the process are here to check we've got it right and this is abdul aziz a local miner who will guide us through the permits required and the bribery payments you need to make to become a legitimate miner. This one document cost you 200,000. 200, Abdul here has obtained um, the first document that you need that will help you to um, go get um, the process started. And he had to pay something like 200,000 loans, which is not an official payment. So that's it. 200,000 loans is already what he has bribed. 200,000 leons, small team. What in the app in next? You don't forget up to 200,000 for fuel, the man and bike, and which I will get a small team. Official payment that? Not, not official payment. <laughs> um, it looks like small team is gaining again. Um, 200,000 is growing. Come on, we need a lot of um, catching up here, official fees. So I'll get my final document. You can pay 800,000 for this document. Yeah. But for me, the document no good delay. I give another extra 500,000. 800,000 leons. Right. Now we need the small team. 500,000 leons, small team. I'm only left with this. Will I go through the same experience? Right, they just confirmed nothing new. 
they know the process, they've been through it. I guess that's it now, um, we've paid all this money and you've got your documents, it's all over, it's all yours. No, this is not only this year, next year we'll get to pay the same money back next year. I can't believe this, every year about 2 million leons and that's roughly about $700 in a place where the average salary is just a meagre $20. I mean, no wonder to most of these officials, this small thing is a real, real big thing. In a place like this, most of the miners have no choice but to turn to illegal mining and it's this sort of corruption at this level that helps create and fuel illicit mining. Nobody knows how many Africans are involved in illicit diamond mining, but it is believed there are hundreds of thousands throughout the continent. This is the Ferrandu Concession, a legal mine where I'll be working today. Okay, so if I take from here, I'll up here and there. Okay. Everything here is done by hand. We must dig through many layers of clay and sand to get to the valuable gravel where we pray we'll find a diamond. We'll need to move an average of 30 tons of this mud before we even get close. I wondered if any of the miners here had heard of the Kimberley process. I they ask one all one word, one, one, one word, they, two word, and they were in Kimberley process. On a side that word, and they Kimberley process. Yes. You know, one day you about Kimberley process. At all. Nobody not show you what that means. Ah. Uh. No, 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 brief Kimberley process. You know what? I don't ever hear about Kimberley process. Oh. Digging with me is Kemo. Like many of the miners here, when he's not working at this mine legally, he's freelancing searching for illicit diamonds. He's been doing this all his working life. So how, how long you don't they do this? Well, for me, it's six to now. I just check out roughly 20 years. What are you doing? But you get family, yeah? Yeah, I got woman, I got picking. My mother, my brother, and they, and they go to school. I want picking. Well, I got three picking. I got three picking. Two girl picking. One boy picking. It's amazing um, how the whole process, you know, um, the partnership, the teamwork, um, you know, it's 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 all stages and layers. Actually, all the digging. Yeah, no, that's mainly for uh, the gravel. So this is the little bit of gravel. We need the gravel now, and from there you will get sand. Okay. You rubber, you rubber, you rubber, David. I'm saying they inside it. The diamond they inside it come out. No, no, the pockets. Come out. That time we they cancel it inside. Come out. That time we they cancel it inside. Come out. We are going to the cap. They inside. Come out. They cap. They inside. They come out. They inside. They come out. 
he dey inside. He come out. This bucket where they go, so he dey inside. He come out. This bucket where they go, so he dey inside. He come out. Hey, that white boy where they see so. He dey inside. He come out. Hey, that white boy where they see so. He dey inside. He come out. Hey, that white boy where they see so. He dey inside. He come out. Oh, that's it. Once we have collected all the gravel from the pit, we take it to the river to wash. We are hoping to find the white boy. If we find a diamond today, it's extra pay for everybody. With this black with the colander, you have to forget diamond, diamond for the day. Look inside the black and this. He's saying wherever you can find this black pieces, you found to find diamond. But we find nothing. Mm -mm. Now the man is out of talk up. Okay. This is fucking, fucking tough. These guys should be well paid. I mean, you walk all day and we just don't stop. You just keep walking. They only get about 500 leons, which is about 30 cents. It's crazy. It's fucking crazy. I swear to God. After nine exhausting and demoralizing hours, we clean up in the company washroom. Tonight, I'll stay with Kemo and his family. He's one of an estimated one million artisanal miners in Africa who work in these conditions. It's horrifying to me that they spend their whole lives digging for the impossible dream. I wonder what it was like to be a miner when our country was torn apart by conflict diamonds. What in have been the kind thing that we have given it? Well, the diamonds are bit on top of the day. For me, they say this person don't get diamond. Or they see you did dress fine. We say you come out that money, the way you did dress you. So that ten treating me day beat the other ten self the other guy they say the guy thief diamond so they hold the guy beat the guy the guy say no got diamond be that the guy be not swallow the diamond so from that they beat the guy the guy die open in bele police stone they search search inside in court police stone what in diamond mean to to you twenty years you take go under that all day diamond nothing way you go for die bien. You did die Vienna. So now some man they fear for God diamond, for go sell give somebody we get a license. We decide really? for go sell really? give a new coin, new coin. We really? call it new Why? Coin. Why? So diamond the way na big diamond where you don't go with her. They not go want for pay the kind price where you want. So we decide for that we go to sell give a new coin, new coin. Because you come out on meet up, you did go sell it, you cost me your money. In 20 years, Kemo has found less than 15 diamonds. With a family to feed, his mind has already been made up. Any diamond he finds outside the mine will be sold on the black market to the smugglers, the Nico Nico. Tomorrow, I start the next part of my journey to see if I can smuggle a diamond into neighboring Guinea. I can't smuggle a real diamond as this is against international and Sierra law. So I'm buying a pebble from Sule, Kemo's four-year-old son. It's this stone that I will smuggle across the border in place of a real diamond. That's all oh, this are Sule. Yes. Yeah. They can sell diamond, give me. Yes. yes. Almost for this diamond. Ten thousand. Ten thousand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not big diamond. No. It's not big diamond. All right, Sandy. I will pay you ten thousand. Give me five. Yes. Ten thousand. Come on, girl. While Kemo sets off for another day of digging, I'm on my own mission. 
I want to find out how easy it is to smuggle my pebble across the border into Guinea. Of course, nobody knows how many diamonds are smuggled out of Africa, but estimates vary between 400 and 600,000 carats each year. Komba is taking me to one of the most frequently used smuggling routes. The value of smuggled diamonds runs into hundreds of millions of dollars, easily enough to fund several revolutions. What would you say is the percentage of um, diamonds that are smuggled out of this country? By estimate, I can say 25% is being smuggled. Do I call them the Nikonikos? And they still do it? Yeah, they are doing it. You see the guy coming ahead, these are one of the smugglers. I know him. He's a big smuggler. He uses this bike to go as far as Guinea. They say now they buy the small, small diamond. <laughs> no, wait. They say now they buy the small, small diamond, eh? All, all man has said now they buy the small, small diamond. <laughs> what do you do? Eh? They are all smugglers in this country. They are smugglers. He was lost for words. <laughs> <laughs> that is unbelievable. Really? Caught <laughs> with his back yes, right yeah. down. Yes, back right. Exactly. I know him. I know him quite well. We are taking a stroll to see the place actually where the smugglers pass. It's only a four hour journey from the diamond mines in Kono to the Guinean border crossing, deep in the rainforest. Take time, yeah? Yes, sir. So this is the border? Yeah, the border, exactly. No securities? No security at all. Both ends, both sides? Both ends, no security. So if I come with uh, my smuggle, anything, I can easily just walk across. Easy walk over, it's easy walk over. Well, you know, um, I have a stone here um, that was sold to me by a young boy, you know? If I am to attempt to go across, will there be any problem? No problem, no problem. Easy walk over, as drinking cool water. Remember, this is the stone that uh, Kemo's son, young Sule, sold me uh, for 10,000 leons. But let's say this is a real diamond, a rough diamond. This will be about 150 uh, carat, roughly about $100,000 or more in the black market. Now, if I cross with this diamond, you know, across the other end to sell it, um, within a day I can find a buyer. And if I choose to start another war in this place, this diamond, this stone then becomes a conflict diamond. And it's not just to avoid the government tax that stones are smuggled into Guinea. If you check the cost of one ten carats in Guinea, it's triple the price of here. So people prefer to sell their stones in Guinea. So in other words, they tend to make loads more money yeah. when they sell it here. Yeah, exactly. Because okay. in Sierra Leone, they make nothing. No better money. Lay wait. So this is yes. this is Guinea. Yeah, Guinea. That's it. Yeah. No border check. No border check. No security. No, no security. We just walk across. Just walk across. Just imagine. So now, if I have, I mean, this stone that I showed you, yeah. you know, if I decide now to go out there and try to sell this stone, can I sell it within a day? As easy as drinking cool water. How easy would it be for this stone to melt in the system? You know, they can mix it and then it can become um, a legitimate stone. It, it can be seen as a stone that comes from Guinea and not uh, 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 um, um, an illicit stone from Sierra Leone. How easy? You mean in Guinea? Yes. Yeah. In, in Guinea? Yeah. You can, it is a matter of taking it to the dealer, to, to, to an exporter. You sell it. When you sell it, give you liquid cash. No uh, problem. And then they present this as a Guinean stone. Yeah, they present it as a Guinean stone. So even the, 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 
the uh, uh, um, Kimberley process, um, you know, certificate, you know, they will certify this as a Guinean as a stone. Guinean stone. And then it melts into the system. Yes. Like magic. Yeah, exactly. Very, very easy. Because they just put it within their own Kimberley process procedure. They export it. Wow. This is very, very scary. If estimates are correct and the quarter of Sierra Leone's diamonds are being smuggled, it means $36 million a year could be used now to buy weapons. My next job is to head to the Guinean capital, Conakry. Here I'm going to buy a diamond and sell it on the black market. I have to go undercover and film secretly. It only takes me an hour to find someone who will sell me a rough diamond. I have no idea where this diamond comes from. There are no receipts exchanged and no questions asked. The only paper that changes hands here are American dollars. Well, I've now got a stone here with me. I'm gonna try now and see how easy or how difficult it is to sell it here in Guinea. I'm taken to a hotel to meet a potential buyer. The fact that there's a market for rough diamonds without any paperwork tells me one of two things. Either they are entering the certification process through the back door, or they are leaving Africa by entirely unmonitored routes. I just can't believe the ease um, at which I sold the stone. I mean, no questions asked, no papers were asked for. And um, just like that, sold my stone. Smuggling diamonds is one thing. Smuggling diamonds from a war zone is another. I'm heading south from Guinea to the Democratic Republic of Congo, where an eight-year civil war left four million dead. My destination, Bujumai, the diamond capital of Congo. Here, in the absence of effective state control, mob justice has become the order of the day. These people are about to lynch a man for being part of a group called the Suicidals an armed gang with a horrific reputation for rape, killing, and robbery. The suicidals prey on miners, murdering them for their diamonds. Even on our way into town, we ran into a group of mourners fired up by the recent killing of a miner. 
Ce qui se passe, c'est notre, notre frère qu'on a décidé, on a assassiné au polygone. Who shot him? Who shot him in the polygone? C'est le suicidaire. Suicidaire, oui. Since the Kimberley process was implemented here, official diamond exports have tripled from $300 million in 1995 to nearly $900 million in 2005. But there isn't a lot to show for all those export earnings here. And most diamond dealers guess that up to 50% of stones still leave the country illegally. Despite the poverty, or maybe because of it, Everyone is trying their chance at being a miner. For some, it's a deadly business. This man died when he fell down a mine shaft. Here, death and diamonds go hand in hand. At the vast state-owned polygon mine that dominates this area, armed guards patrol and arrest illegal miners. Was still the suicidals lock on the boundaries, ready to kill. But every day thousands turn up risking their lives in the daily lottery for that one stone. The diamond they dream will change their fortunes. Look, look at that. Look at this. Look at this. Oscar <laughs> <laughs> dozens and dozens of illegal miners. Look at them in the water. Man, this is desperation at, at a different level. Look at them, look at them. Really desperate. Just a little bit scared that, you know, they might start um, firing back. Look up there, look at that. If they are not being chased by the police and security, the miners risk being robbed and murdered by the suicidals. Everyone here is saying they're, they're trying to make a little bit of money, they're trying to make... It's clear that it's all about survival. But, you know, the, this level of desperation, I mean, even with all the risks and the fact that they get arrested every day, but they're still willing to put their lives on the line, this level of desperation really, really worries me here. You are a child. You are a kid. How old are you? Those miners unwilling to risk imprisonment by the police or murder by the suicidals are reduced to mining at the edges of the polygon concession where diamonds are more scarce. Here, thousands of artisanal miners scratch out a living. <laughs> How long have you been doing this? How long have you been mining? Have you ever heard about the Kimberley process? You don't know what the Kimberley process is. So have you heard about blood diamonds? Diamonds that are sold to buy weapons to help sponsor wars. You've not heard about Kimberley process, you've not heard about blood diamonds. Do you care where your diamond ends? Is that what everyone here believes as well? It's just about money. Yeah. 
Everywhere here, where people look for diamonds, there are people with guns. At the edge of the polygon concession, the miners have told us that rogue members of the security forces charge them to mine. I will, I will make it so obvious. They, they said, you people, as, as long as you see illicit miners, you shoot at them. You do. That's what you paid for. Oh, they've paid, so that's yes. why they're allowed. So they bribed. Yes. And but if they if they don't pay, you shoot. Yes. Oui, oui. And, uh, <laughs> In these parts, every miner is touched by the conflict. I met Kabongo Kabansos. <laughs> Do you know why your brother went into the concession? What prompted him to go in there? If things continue the way they are, people being shot all around, what's going to happen? You know, for me, these guys are now already on the front line. I mean, shootings and killings are taking place here. Perhaps it's not yet um, a full-scale civil war, but, I mean, what would you call this? On this journey, I've seen the price that many of my fellow Africans are paying for these stones. The diamonds that come from Bujumai are not classed as conflict diamonds. But I would not want to wear the jewelry made with the diamond that Basanka Kabansos was killed for. The last leg of my journey, and I'm leaving Africa and heading to the capital of the world, New York. The United States imports a billion dollars worth of rough or uncut diamonds each year. Surely here, no one can pretend they haven't heard of conflict diamonds and the Kimberley process. In my briefcase, I have $50,000 worth of uncut diamonds. They have been loaned to me by a reputable New York dealer. I wonder if any of the other dealers in this city would be interested in buying them from me if I pretend I have no certificate and come directly from the Congo. Well, 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 well. I have um, got uh, the diamonds here. By right, I shouldn't be able to sell these stones here at all. Wow. Look at that. It looks really, really beautiful. But these could be the sort of stone that people have shed blood for. Diamonds that people have lost their lives for. Seriously, it would be a real shame, a big blow for me if I'm able to sell these diamonds here because this is the place that should be holding firm to um, the Kimberley process. This is the heart of the American Diamond District where on court or rough diamonds are traded every day. I will be filming secretly. It doesn't take long to find a willing buyer. Right. I'm not dealing only with you. 
give me gold, people give me diamond, people give me color stone. I have all of them. I deal with African people. You understand? I want a relationship to buy from you whatever you have. You come over here and half an hour, you done all the things, go back. You got the money, go back, buy again. I buy all the diamond you have. All the diamond you have. I need stones. I'm not kidding. Okay, how much you want for this? In the next place, they give me the hard sale. Yes, how can I help you, sir? Sir, don't mind them. I have some business at home over there. Okay. You can help me. Ruffs? Ruffs? Yes. Ruffs? Yes. Okay, come on. These are proper <laughs> African ones. Okay. From where? From Congo. Congo. So I don't have documents. No, sir. Because everybody is saying you have to have documents to say. Well, Kimberly certificate. How much do you want for this? How much do you want? 30,000. For the whole thing? How much? Yes. 30,000? Those stones, these stones, whatever stones you have in Congo, I buy everything. Give me the ultimate, ultimate, Hello. ultimate best price. I take one cash and buy it right now. Two, four, six, eight, ten thousand. Ready to cash. Diamonds are so beautiful. But what is it about them that makes people so greedy? This guy is really putting the pressure on. This is ten thousand cash. Boss, please put something, please. Ten thousand is small. This is the best price. This is your money out of here. This is my stuff here. These could so easily be diamonds that people have died for, but he just doesn't seem to care. Excellent person. I, have, I, have I don't people. joke around. I, I, my, this, you know what speaks for me? This right here. This speaks. I, I'm a man that gives you business right away. Boom. That's it. You want a million dollar? I have a million dollar. You want ten million dollar? I have ten million dollar. Whatever number you ask, that's what I have. Believe me. <laughs> Do you understand? I understand only too well, and it's a bitter disappointment for me. From the desperation in Africa to the greed on the pavements of New York, it just makes me feel diamonds are a dirty business. Throughout my journey, I found out that the Kimberley process is just not working properly. It's meant to put an end to conflict diamonds, to prompt us about the real price that a few of us are paying for these stones. Yes, most diamonds provide jobs for tens of thousands of Africans and many, many thousands of other people in the rest of the world. But as long as some of these stones continue to fund the maimings, rapings and killings, then how on earth can we offer these diamonds as a true symbol of love? You work it out. But what can anyone do when buying a diamond engagement ring? Well, you won't be able to verify the diamond's authenticity anywhere. But for the moment, I implore you to go to a reputable dealer and ask for a guarantee that they comply with the Kimberley process. Even though it is not perfect, it's the most important step so far in stopping this bloody trade. No more now, diamond or bush, I roll, I am a drag, a barber, or bang a big, 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 Mother, you do
Yeah, banging the poem and I shall. 